I think it's worth starting by saying I think I'm more positive about Prometheus than a lot of people. That's not to say that Prometheus uh, isn't without flaws, but I went to see it uh, having avoided the trailers, having avoided the posters, having avoided the uh, you know the magazine features, attempting really hard to know as little about it as possible. Um, so many things, and it is a mixed bag. Um, I like the idea. I mean, all the best sci-fi is about ideas and also manages to match that with spectacle. And sci-fi should engender moments of awe. You were in the same screening as I am, and there are moments of awe in, in Prometheus. Stunning, yeah. Or as in you go, oh, you know, like that, like the old John Wayne, you know, uh, surely... Remember, surely he's the son of God. God. Can you do it yes. with a bit more awe? Oh, surely this was the son of God. I mean, I like the fact that it's a big, proper, unashamed science fiction film which has the temerity to deal with big themes, you know, like meeting our makers. Although, of course, the theme of meeting our makers is something which runs through sci-fi whether it's 2001 or whether it's Solaris or whether it's Star Trek because I mean bear in mind in the first Star Trek movie the whole thing with Vija is about you know meeting the next gen that's very very 2001 in fact Star Trek 5 they go to heaven and William Shatner has a fight with God who turns out not to be God at all and in fact the score for Prometheus in which there's been, there's been a lot of talk about the score because obviously in the first film it was like dan dan do the tiny minimalist score and this this has got a much bigger sort of romping score kettle drums obviously but there is a recurrent positive leap either a you know major fourth or a major fifth which reminds me of star trek and there is some trekness in this not necessarily in a bad way although funnily enough, i think in tone the thing it's closest to is that robert zemeckis film contact certainly it's close to that in as much as it's the kind of film I mean, remember that Contact was a film which actually had a courtroom scene in which people argued about the ethics of sending an atheist into space. Well, there's an awful lot of that in Prometheus. Now, the downside of that is, and people say you shouldn't compare it with Alien, but clearly it is it is in the alien world. In the same way, instead, that Phantom Menace was in the same world as Star Trek. Phantom Menace was a prequel, three back, and if you, if you think about how badly a film like Phantom Menace could have worked out, you know... We're, we are light years ahead. I know that sounds like it's damning with faint praise, but I'm just saying the last time somebody did a really eagerly awaited science fiction non-immediate prequel, it was Phantom Menace, and look what happened with that. The downside of the fact that this has one foot in the contact universe is that in Alien, the which had its roots in Dark Star, obviously, you had a characters, characters who were like space truckers, and what they did was they it was full of mumbled conversations about not being paid and constantly talking across each other, talking about the little picture rather than the big picture, and that's what made it seem so real. You believed in those people because they talked the way you believed that space truckers would. This, which has its roots, I think, much more in Star Trek or Contact, and I don't mean that as dismissively, because actually I really, really like Contact, has people constantly speechifying about the big picture, constantly talking about, you know, it's about where we come from, it's about our makers, they're calling us that sort of thing you know it is people are constantly having those conversations the characters are also less well drawn than alien in the lesser roles i mean there is actually some confusion as to who is what and where i have to confess that watch as i was watching the film there was one moment when i com completely confused two characters and that never happened in alien i mean the, the thing in alien which is that when something happens to john hurt it's completely unexpected because because it's john hurt what this does have is a very fine central performance by Numi Rapace, who I think is great, and a better one by Michael Fassbender, even because Michael Fassbender is really the centre of the movie. And in fact, it is clearly that Scott is less interested in making an alien prequel than he is in building up to the ideas of Blade Runner. Blade Runner being about what does it mean to be human? If you are an android, what does it mean to be human? That's the whole Deckard is an alien, Deckard is, Deckard is a robot, Deckard isn't. So clearly, I think here... The, the the android figure played by Michael, Michael Fassbender is influenced by Deckard by the whole idea of replicants in Blade Runner and also by David from AI. I mean, right down to the point that whilst I was watching Fassbender, I started watching to see whether he was blinking. Because you remember the whole central thing about Hayley Joel Osment's performance in AI, in which he plays the robot boy, is whether he blinks. And of course, he doesn't blink. And I started looking at Michael Fassbender's performance and thinking, I bet he's not blinking. I think that's what's going on. There's also obviously nods to Hal from 2001. There is one moment when he... When he appears to say a line which actually is a line from 2001 and that's fine the only thing I'd urge everyone not to forget is just how fantastic Lance Henriksen was in the android role in Aliens so I think Fassbender is great but I think let's not forget about Lance Henriksen who is absolutely brilliant um, crucially as Ridley Scott said there we're not on 426 we're on 223 so there is a distance just to remind this. us of the significance well that, that, that we're not on the planet that they land in at the beginning of Alien and so and when we came out of the screening people were having an awful lot of, sort of arguments about how the thing matches up and as Ridley Scott said there 
it's it suggests towards Alien, but we're not there yet. At we least are, two more. We are at least two movies away. Um, I mean, and I, I think that's fine. I think that should put paid to a lot of the problems that some people have. It does, for me, have moments of awe in terms of the, you know, the, the, you see the, the Giga set designs are fantastic, going through those cavernous things that look partly, they look biomechanical, they look, part of them is real. And of course, I interviewed Giga in his museum in, in, in Switzerland. And I mean, it is like some sort of seventh ring of, you know, infernal biotechnological hell. And you do get the sense of that with this personally, I don't like CGI. I like everything to be physical. I like everything to be gruey. There is also a sort of return to the whole, you know, mother pregnancy thing, which has always been something which is going on in the alien world. And there is one set piece, but I'm not going to talk about it specifically, but just say there is one set piece in it which has a, oh, blimey. I mean, it's ridiculous and it's ludicrous, but it's also really quite gruey and sticky in a good way. So, gruey? Gruey, yeah. How are you spelling that? I don't know how you spell it. Gruey. It's got lots of gru in it. Gru. I don't know, but because I'm aware that this second hand is coming. So here's what my feeling is. In the end, it's 7.5 out of 10. It's not a three-star movie. It's just shy of a four-star movie. And there is much to enjoy in it. I think some people have been disappointed because they were expecting something else. But I, I mean, I was gripped and engrossed the whole way through. I think there are flaws in it. Yes, undoubtedly. But it was a big science fiction movie made by a sentient, intelligent being. And it had ideas, and no, they don't all work, and no, it's not quite what people expected. But And we have to talk about the 3D because there was a very significant line in that thing. But I think generally, it's a waving thumbs up, 7.5 out of 10.